Hello everyone, this is Ron from High Tech Legion and this is part of our review of the Corsair H100i self-contained liquid cooling solution. And this is a part where we show you how to install the H100i on your system. Let's begin with the AMD mounting. If you've seen our H60 2013 update review, you're probably familiar with this mounting mechanism already. So it is the typical cool it design. For AMD, you require, of course, the AMD faceplate. It is magnetic, so all you need to do is uh, just position it like that. You don't even need to screw it like the H100. You don't need to use any screwdrivers or tools. And you also need two thumb screws and the AMD latch, as you see here. All you need to do is take a thumb screw and put that in there. Just don't lock it completely. You need a little bit of leeway. You can easily just remove that and put it back in again later. As you can see, just how convenient this new mounting mechanism is on the coolant design. Place that on the face. And now we're ready to position it onto our motherboard. Of course, once you have uh, positioned your Corsair H100i, simply just latch the locks on the top and bottom side and just secure the thumb screws until it is fully secured. Of course, you want to do this uh, and by applying the same pressure uh, on both sides one at a time without completely locking one side so the pressure is even. It doesn't require a separate backplate, it just uses the default uh, AMD backplate mechanism that you have on your motherboard already. Now we're going to move on to the LG1155 and then show you how to mount the radiator and connect the connectors onto your case and your power supply. To install the H100i on an Intel LGA1155, LGA1156 or LGA1366 motherboard, you will use the provided backplate. See here, of course, uh, depending on your motherboard, we have the LGA1155 here. So we adjust the distance of the uh, these holes for the backplate to the smaller one. And we just simply slide it down to the lowest size and of course you maximize that when you're going to install an LGA 1366 that is really the only difference I'm going to take our motherboard go to the back and show you put that notice that our back plate has that little groove there compared to the other side so that is where you would position it like so so that area is cleared and we flip it again. I need to. You can also install this, of course, on your case. But uh, if you have a flat surface like this, you can just align it like, this, like that. And you will also need the standoffs. Make sure you get the longer standoffs. The other uh, set of standoff that has uh, one short end and one longer end is for the LG 2011. So you take these standoffs and you just basically twist them in place you can use a long nose pliers or you can just use your thumb since you'll, uh, you're going to uh, secure it further anyway these are essentially just stand off to make sure that they are uh, firmly secured with your thumb on to the back plate there just to hold the back plate in place this part is still similar to the H100 uh, the only difference of course is the new magnetic mounting mechanism there you go as with the H60 2013 edition there is a little bit of slack so don't worry if you can see that there it doesn't uh, that the standoffs are not completely uh, in place they're still moving there's a little bit of gap there that is of course an allowance that uh, is part of the coolant design and once we have those we take our H100 and the pump unit since we installed the AMD we still have the AMD mounting here so we just remove that of course we're going to use the thumb screw there so we remove that thumb screw that we use there since Corsair provided four We'll require two more 
But of course we won't use the AMD latch, we don't need that. Or the AMD back, uh, rather bracket that we see here. So side, grab our thumb screws and grab the Intel faceplate. See here, bracket and put in the pump. Of course, as you can see, I'm just. This is just a demonstration. Hence, I don't have a uh, thermal paste here yet. Of course, when they, once I do my testing, I will have one. And uh, you can also use the uh, default. If you're just going to install it once, uh, you can just use the provided uh, thermal paste that's pre-applied there already. Of course, this is just for a demo. I know there will be trolls there in the comments leaving that I forgot to put it. I am doing this deliberately just to save time. And I just magnetically attach that in there. And just imagine that I have a thermal paste there. I have it on top. You can see that it's much easier to install if you've installed H100 before. The H100 is very tight, especially if you're installing an L2011. And you just put it in. Again, as with uh, mounting a any heat sink on your system that it has four screws in each corner I advise not to completely secure it on uh, one corner completely and, and uh, do it in increments so do it uh, around 25 percent each corner until you uh, reach the maximum locking uh, security there so there you have it as simple as that If you are, of course, you can move the hose if you need more room to maneuver. Or you can use a screwdriver to completely secure it. You have it. As you can see, there's no more slack. If you go to the back, the back plate has no slack in there because it automatically adjusts, even though there is a little bit of gap. That is, of course, by design. And now we're ready to plug it in. And, of course, there is a plastic cover there so make sure that uh, you remove that before using it now we're ready to install it into our case and I'll show you how and to plug in LJ your HS100i take the standoff with one end shorter of course one end longer and just put it into the integrated locking mechanism it's essentially the same mounting distance as an LJ1366 except it already has uh, mounting holes, so you just need to use your thumb. You don't really need um, to use any tool here to put these standoffs in place. And of course, you have to decide, depending on your case setup, you have to decide how you want the fans to be installed. Uh, Corsair actually recommends that, similar to the H100, that you mount the fans, uh, two of the fans provided as an intake rather than as an exhaust. Uh, this is of course, the idea is that you want to, uh, to draw in cool air from outside to pass through the radiator instead of drawing in the warm air from inside the case uh, to pass through the radiator. Uh, the manual actually, the illustration in the manual, funnily enough, actually shows an exhaust uh, setup, but uh, I'm going to show you how to set up the, uh, the intake. So you have a case like this one, this is the NZXC Phantom 810. So there's plenty of room, you can actually fit a 360 right in. This one is the one that also has that uh, updated mounting mechanism for uh, support of 15mm uh, and 20mm um, distance 140 140mm fans. But uh, since the H100i only uses a 15mm 240mm uh, radiator, we won't really have an issue with that. So we just take the fan. Have these new uh, Corsair fans here, and you basically, uh, if you if you're not familiar with fans and how they work, first time you're setting it up, you can find the flow direction. Usually, there's an arrow in there, but if you can't find an arrow, there's no arrow. But uh, in this case, it is basically uh, see where the fan blades are pointing. That means it it spins clockwise this way, and it's blowing fan in front, uh, blowing air here uh, towards me. If you position it that way. And it's uh, rotating counterclockwise, that means it is blowing, it's intaking air uh, here from the camera. So we position that in the top as an intake. Of 
We don't need to screw it in place right now. Just position the fans on top there. And uh, make sure to already have your uh, your fan cables dangling. These cables seem to be a lot longer than the uh, H100 fans. Let me just grab H100 fans here just for a quick comparison. Remove the screws for this one so it doesn't fall off. Here are my H100 uh, fans. And let me put it side by side with the H100i. And the cable is definitely longer. This is the H100, as you can see, sure. It's the H100i. Only goes up there. So it's about two thirds, uh, only goes up to two thirds the length of the H100i fans. Just for a quick comparison of the two fans there. I'm going to position it on top. As an intake. We don't need to screw it in place right now. Uh, since we need to position the radiator first. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to take uh, the screws provided. There are two different types of screws here and they all have washers so make sure to use a washer and also uh, it doesn't move around, it doesn't loosen up. The long one is what we're going to use to mount both the fan into the case and the radiator. It passes through all of that. If you're going to mount the uh, the radiator itself directly onto the case you need to use the shorter screws provided see here just pull it out and there we go that's pretty much it I am going to spare you the boredom of watching me screw the radiator in, radiator in place well you get idea you've screwed probably many uh, things before so I'm just going to put there, that out see I still have plenty of space you can actually add in more fans in there so you can have a push pull configuration I have the fan as an intake at the top. Let me just uh, take my camera here if I can just quickly show you. Right there. And in. Move aside the cables for a bit so it doesn't interfere with our work area. And then, of course, you have a, to apply a thermal uh, interface material if you're not going to use the already. Uh, the pre-applied thermal material that was on the pump itself and uh, of course you don't need to use much so I'm not there. and then make sure you have the Intel bracket it is the magnetic bracket in position and just maneuver it in place it is a lot easier to put in than the uh, H100i, the H100i's bracket was a lot snugglier and here we go we take the thumb screw once again like we did with the AMD and Intel LJ 1155 we just uh, screw it in of course we don't do it all the way we do it uh, but corner by corner just by a few degrees each time so hold it in place I'm not letting go of the pump because I don't want it to smudge and kind of introduce air into the into the uh, uh, CPU area there. So I'm just applying pressure. If you're, of course, if you're applying, if you're installing this uh, facing with, with the case lying down, you won't really have an issue. There we go. I'm just gonna rotate it, secure it completely. Percent this time. That should be perfect. As you can see, there is a hardwired cable in here. Make sure that it was out of the way when you were screwing it in place. The last thing you want is for the cable to be actually trapped in between your uh, your pump and your uh, uh, CPU. Here we go. You're going to attach this. Uh, well, make sure we can secure it first, of course. And you can just easily adjust the hose, whichever was, whichever way uh, you want it, just so that it doesn't uh, interfere. Of course, you want to secure it further. You can actually just take your screwdriver and finish the job right there. Make sure you contact this uh, tight. 
go. And now you have the dummy connector. Plug it into your CPU connector so that it doesn't detect it as not having any fans. And then you have your power. Now it doesn't, it's not Molex anymore. They actually, uh, Corsair actually has a SATA connector now. So that's, I like that. It's a lot better than the Molex connector. And then you can actually split this further if uh, you find it that uh, there's enough space there. So let me just grab my uh, disk drive, PC optical drives, uh, say the cable here. This will save me time uh, looking for a cable from the power supply. There you go. You have it. I have, it, I have power now uh, for the pump and a dummy plug for that. And then next step is to plug our fans, of course. Notice these are three pin fan connectors. You can attach it directly to your motherboard or to your fan controller. If you want to attach it onto the unit itself, you need to use the cables that uh, Corsair provided. This actually allows you to control it through the software. You have the connector there for pins and a proprietary connector. Of course, I'm going to just connect it immediately just to save time. Uh, Obviously, you can manage it a lot better than how I'm doing here. It looks cluttered for now, just uh, to demonstrate for you. And, of course, plugging it in. Now, we're trying to look for the connector here, right on top. And... Plug it in. It's quite small, so... Might take some use to. And I'm going to take the camera and show you a little bit of that later once I plug it in. And then, of course, the USB connector. Again, once again, if you want to use the software, take the USB connector for the Corsair Link. Plug in one end into a USB header. I only have two USB headers on this motherboard, so I am going to take out my. I believe the other one's a card reader, so let me just remove that. And plug in my Corsair. Connector right there. And mini USB. Plugs in somewhere here on the side. There we go. Or is it the other way around? There we go. Obviously, it's a bit messy because if I just need to show you how the connectors go go in, you can see there is the uh, USB connector here on the side. You have the fan connectors here on the top, and uh, if you want, of course, better uh, cable management so that the airflow doesn't interfere with the components. So I'm gonna uh, manage this now. Put in a a uh, video card, run our system, and I'll show you the software. Uh, included with this one, how to control the fans, and then we'll see our benchmark results.